Hello again. This is uh, another UNL, University of Nebraska, um, online astronomy lab, the Hertzsprung-Russell Diagram Lab. So Einar Hertzsprung and Henry Norris Russell, about 100 years ago, a little bit over, came up with a way to plot stars on what I call a personality diagram uh, for stars. Basically, we can graph luminosity and temperature or set up axes and then we can plot where a star falls in that and we can infer a lot of information about a particular star. Where this starts is in how we classify stars um, on a spectral classification scheme. And again, these are the things that we learned about last fall when we looked at things like continuous spectra, emission lines, absorption lines. Lots of this stuff should be review. Um, hopefully you have already read through this or skimmed this, um, but what I really want to come down to is look at the classification scheme and explain how it's, it can tell us temperature, peak wavelength, and color. They're all kind of synonymous. This is, again, a lot of this is due to the work from Annie Cannon, Annie Jump Cannon. She reordered an existing classification scheme that went in order of A, B, C, D, and she simplified it and used a couple of other observations of stars or parameters to reorder the scheme in a simpler way and what came out of it was that it, it turns out it's a it's a temperature scale for stars so the classification scheme um, you can look at the classification letter uh, the temperature the max the peak wavelength right here or max wavelength if you consider where its black body peak is and then the perceived color of the star so stars that are o type um, and I'll explain in a second why the, the zeros are here. Those are the hottest surface temperatures, 40,000 Kelvin. Um, peak wavelength, 72.5 nanometers. The actual number value here, not so important, but understanding that this is in the ultraviolet. So a star that has a peak wavelength in the ultraviolet is going to appear blue to us. Um, and that's, again, because we can't see ultraviolet, but the star will be emitting far more blue than any other part of the spectrum. A B-type star, 20,000 Kelvin. Um, A-type, 10,000 Kelvin. Again, these peaks are still in the ultraviolet. We get down to F-type stars, where we're getting closer to the visible spectrum. G-type stars, this is where our sun is. It is a G-type star. Uh, temperatures around five to 6,000 Kelvin. Peaks are now in the visible spectrum. Um, the perceived color of these stars, um, yellow typically. Then we get down to K-type stars and M-type stars. M-type stars being the coolest stars. Their peak, this is in the infrared. This is around the same wavelength as a, an infrared remote control, but that's not the only kind of light that an M-type -type star emits. It emits a whole range of star, range of colors, um, but the peak is in the infrared, so the overall star will look red because it's emitting more red light than other parts of the visible spectrum. Surface temperature is relatively cool, less than 10 times smaller than what the hottest stars uh, will be burning out of their surface. So there is this little applet right here. You may have to click to enable your Adobe Flash Player. And what it does is it connects the apparent color of a star with its effective surface temperature and tying it to a spectral type. So if I bring it all the way over to the O0, and I really like how this simulator um, simulates the diffraction spikes as well as if we're looking at it through some kind of reflecting telescope. Um, O0, effective surface temperature greater than 38,000 Kelvin. As I move the slider, there's another number. So all these spectral types have a little subtype, which goes zero to nine. And then we get to the next spectral class, which would be B after the O. And then that's more in the 20,000 Kelvin range. And then we get down to the A type and then the F type. And then we get down to specifically, I want to point out G2. Our sun is of spectral type G2. And that's why we say it's a yellow dwarf, even though its peak is actually not in the uh, yellow part of the spectrum. But we consider that there's a lot more in the longer wavelengths than the shorter wavelengths emitted for any black body curve. So that's why our sun has a the designation a yellow dwarf. Um, and then continuing on, K-type 
starts to look orange, and then M-type stars are the stars that look red. And again, especially in those globular clusters, we saw all of these colors, the whole spectral classification. Um, on your uh, packet for this uh, lab activity, when you're filling in the table, be approximate. So one of them, one question asks, well, what star with a uh, surface temperature of 11,000 Kelvin um, round to the nearest? This I'd say rounds to 12,000. This one rounds to 11,000. So again, the more important part is that you are connecting the spectral classification letter with a temperature and with a peak wavelength and with the color and realizing that those are essentially synonymous values. So when a star, when, when an astronomer says O-type star, they're saying a star is a very hot star. If an astronomer says M-type star, they're saying its surface temperature is relatively cool.